Well, hi everybody at Music Zoo. I'm Leroy Parnell, and this is my signature Leroy Parnell Gold Top. What makes this guitar different? Um, well, I'll start from the beginning. I, uh, when I was 15 years old, I'm a '56 model myself, and I, I found the Gold Top in the paper in Fort Worth, where I, near where I'm from, and I bought, I, I bought the guitar for $300. And I, that was the only guitar I owned until I was 30 years old. I played every gig with that guitar. I wrote every song with that guitar. And as I began to make records and started having a few hits and things like that, I started scratching out. I, this guitar is an amalgamation of all the best things I found in every Les Paul or 335 or really any guitar. Um, that I've used over the years, and uh, I'll just go through a few little of the pointers right now. As you notice, it doesn't have a pick guard. I've always taken them off. I think it looks so much sexy. It's so much sexier looking without the pick without without the pick guard on it. I'm sure that I'm sure that everybody feels differently about that. But for me, I, I like having that my fingers down here because generally I play with my fingers, especially when I'm playing slide. Um, we did a few different things on this. Um, the the actual gold color, which is the hardest color to paint, because it's actually gold flake, and if you don't get it just right, it can look kind of champagne-y. Uh, if you notice, this one does not. It looks like a gold top, and the older it gets, the better it's going to look. Um, I hand rolled uh, at the custom shop all the necks. This is sort of a cross between it, my 56 gold top and my 58 gold top. Um, and we just felt it and just kept feeling it until it felt right. And everybody that's played it so far has been just knocked out by it. Loved it. Uh, there is a slight, uh, we'll just call it a little um, movement here to smooth this out. Just so you know where you are, because I, I know for me as a player, it's oftentimes <laughs> I've got my eyes closed and um, when I'm I'm playing, I'm, I, as a playing the Paul all these years, I need to know where I am. But sometimes it kind of was too much, and then the way so we we knocked it down a bit. The other thing is that you can't see it from the front, but we actually took away a little of this cutaway right here at the back, not at the front. So visually, there's no difference in in this and and a vintage '57 Les Paul. Uh, but you can really make, I tell you, when you really feel the difference is when you're playing slide or you're playing up high. Because it gives you so much more room, your hand is kind of cocked like that when it's playing your guitar anyway. So you've got more room in the back here than you've ever had before. But it doesn't visually mess up the guitar. One of the other things that I'm so very pleased about, my dear friend Ron Ellis down in San Diego, and I started working on these humbucking pickups over a year ago. And let me tell you, we've gone through every imaginable combination. Ron, much more than I, is I was more like, well, what do you think? You know, he'd send them to me and we would get together and we went through Alnico 2s, 3s, 4s, 5s, degaussed them, half degaussed them, threw them in the wash bucket, <laughs> you know, threw them in the threw them in the dryer. I, I don't know what all we did, but even the filister screws were different. Um, in order to get the best PAF tone or patent pending tone, because everybody knows who, if you own patent, uh, patent applied fours or patent pending pickups, all of them sound different. So you can't say, well, it sounds like a PAF, because, well, which one? So these, these, sound like my favorite that I've ever heard. Very bell-like, almost single coil-like at the strike. But immediately after that, the bloom begins. And it's like, you don't want to stop playing that note. So I'm automatically at, well, it's, the sustain is unbelievable. And partly in, due to the fact that the pickup is interacting with the guitar itself and if y'all be so kind to hand me the blank down there so I can show the inside of the uh, 
guitar, which will be the, the last part of this little presentation that I'm doing. Thank you, gentlemen. I got a lot of friends here helping me out today. We're having a good time at NAMM, by the way. I wish you were here. Uh, maybe you are here. I don't know. Uh, if you notice here, usually in the Les Paul, we had a cavity, right? Everybody used to come up to me and say, Leroy, why do you keep your pickups so low down in your guitar? Why do you keep your pickups so low in the guitar? I said, because I like to hear the wood. Well, by, if you notice, what we did was we created a tone, what I called it the tone throne, but it's really, uh, I think the actual term that they're using is, uh, uh, Tom, what? What's our actual term? Big block. Uh, big block. Big block. We were calling it a tone throne for a little while, but we thought somebody might get the wrong idea. Imagine that, a guitar player getting the wrong idea. Anyway, but if you notice, the, the actual pole pieces actually go down into the guitar, so you're hearing the mahogany too. You're not just hearing the top. You're not just hearing the string. You're not just hearing any, you're hearing it all. And it's up to you how much how much of that you want or don't want. But what it does is it all works together to give you the very best guitar that we could possibly give you. And I am so proud of this. Please check it out. It's a Leroy Parnell Gold Top Les Paul. Get one. Get him.